Hey, this is Susan. And if you are one of those people that is continually asking, how do I release the past? I want to move past this, but I don't know how. This is the podcast for you. I wanted to share it here because it comes up so often. Also, if you want to subscribe to my podcast, you can find the link for Android and iTunes on the front page of my website, or just go to iTunes Blended Insight. Same with Podbean Blended Insight for Android users. I hope this helps in sending all my love. Welcome to the Blended Insight Podcast. Hello, bright souls, and thank you very much for joining me on my podcast. This is Susan with Blended Insight, and for those of you that don't know me, I am an intuitive, an energy healer, and an integrative slash holistic wellness practitioner. And all any of that means is that I love to learn, grow, develop, and evolve and share everything that I've learned with others to help and inspire them to do the same. On today's podcast, I want to talk about letting go of the past. This is something that comes up all the time. People say, how do you let go of the past? Or they're stuck there. So for this podcast, I want to share ways, some practical ways, some spiritual ways, and then we'll do energy healing at the end. So the very first thing I want to say about this podcast is let these ideas just wash over you. What resonates with you, take it, and what doesn't, just let it go. This isn't to anger anyone. This isn't to cause you to dig in and argue for your limitations. None of that. These are simple ideas that have worked for me, that I've learned, that have worked for others. And I'm going to share them with you to try to help you to move forward. So the first thing I want to talk about on the practical front is just simply ask yourself, why are you dwelling in or on the past? What I've learned is that oftentimes people that live in the past live there because they feel that there's something back there that's better than what's here or what's forward. So I I shared this in my uh, Learn It Live class on staying positive around negative people. And I shared it because it used to bother me how people would just live in high school years. I would be around people that would just live in their glory days. And that's all they talked about. And I'm thinking, you graduated high school 20, 30, 40 years ago. Why are you still talking about it? And once I was listening to a lecture and I heard someone share that people that live in high school years are living there because they don't feel that their life is going to get any better from that point. In other words, they feel those were the best years. And now that that's over, what is in front of them is not as delicious as that what was behind them. And that's really sad, but that is the reality of some people. So I'm only sharing that to have you personally consider, just go over it in your mind, why are you living there? The other thing to consider is, what is your payoff for being stuck in the past? So for instance, let's say that you're stuck in a past relationship. Maybe by being stuck there, you feel that you don't have to stand on your own two feet and create a life by yourself. Maybe it's because by being stuck there, you feel that you won't have to move on and present yourself to date in the future. Maybe it's because you want people to feel sorry for you and help you. I'm just throwing out suggestions. We all have those lower thoughts, those lower tendencies that we need to personally look at so that we can address them and improve them. Also, One thing to notice is when someone says something encouraging or positive to you, notice if your knee jerk is to start arguing for your limitations. I notice this when I will share very high vibrational positive thoughts. Someone will come back with something very low vibrational like, oh, well, what if this happens? What if that happens? And they're basically showing me how low their vibration is. They're arguing for their limitations. And I've done that before. So I'm not judging. There's no judgment. This is all part of the human experience. And we are here to share and uplift each other and keep each other going. So when I see people arguing for their limitations, I usually will just ignore it. I won't address it. I'll just move on because I know where they're stuck. And the more positive I am, we're a complete vibrational mismatch. So not only was my comment a vibrational mismatch, my response will also be a vibrational mismatch because I'm not going to go down into the pity party with them. So if you find yourself doing that, just ask yourself, what is this doing for me? When someone says something positive and encouraging to me regarding my situation, like maybe you're stuck in a 
I'm, I'm using a breakup because that's big for people with all the planetary shifts that we just had. Um, so maybe you're stuck like feeling sorry for yourself over a breakup and someone tries to encourage you and then you start arguing. Well, you don't know this. You don't know that. Blah, blah, blah. Just ask yourself, what does arguing for your limitations do for you? What purpose is it serving? Is it making you um, get attention? Is it putting you in a position of people feeling sorry for you and that feels good? Just be totally, totally honest with yourself. So after you've been honest with yourself, identify that emotion or that need that you're trying to get met through staying stuck. Identify that. And then take that, put it in your back pocket because that's something that you can use to propel you forward here in the future. And we'll talk about that here in a little bit. The other thing, I heard Dr. Wayne Dyer say something about this many years ago, and it really resonated with me. Really just take an inventory of your life, especially if you're a person that's been stuck in a certain circumstance or the past for a long, long time. He said, have you lived the past five years or have you lived the same year five years, like the same exact year for five years. So you've lived one year five times, or have you lived like new five years, something new every single year? One of the things that I always try to do is make each year, make myself better, do something new, try something. I'm always taking a class. I'm trying a new um, dietary approach, depending on the cycles of my body and how I'm changing. I'm trying a new exercise class. I'm going through some new meditation practices. I'm looking for a new way of energy healing to enhance my practice and to also what I offer uh, to enhance what I'm offering my client base. So there's al- I'm always learning. I'm always trying to develop grow, evolve. Last year, I went and got my integrated wellness practitioner diploma. And a few years ago, I ended up getting my holistic wellness practitioner diploma. But you know, before that, what I went and got my bachelor degree for business quality management, then I'm taking online courses, I did Deborah King's energy healing. And then I did um, some classes with Radley Valentine online, I'm, I'm always looking for an opportunity to advance myself, and to take myself to the next evolution of the journey of where I am right now. So when you have ideas and you have, and you're propelling yourself forward to get better, you don't have as much time and energy or even interest in dwelling on the past because you're too busy creating right here and now to try to make your future better. So I'm going to go over a couple of big life circumstances that happen. These are just examples to try to help you dig a little bit deeper regarding what's keeping you stuck and the feeling that you're trying to achieve or the payoff that you're trying to achieve. And I'm going to give you some ideas to consider to help you flush that out. So the very first one is sensitive and my heart goes out to you. I have tremendous compassion if you've lost a loved one. I've shared many times, both of my brothers passed away 10 years apart. They were older brothers, they were twin brothers, and they both passed away in automobile accidents. And so I understand loss of family members. And here is something that I use that has helped me. I always think, what would the person that I lost want me to do? How would that person want me to live? Would they want me to just suffer and not move and just be stuck on them? Or would they want me to live the life that they were unable to live? That's kind of a perspective shift that I always use that helps me. Another perspective that I heard Mike Dooley share, he does the notes from the universe, is he talked about karmic contracts where perhaps we sat with another soul before incarnating and we decided that we would come in as their child and possibly die young or maybe we would have some kind of illness as for for the experience because he was sharing it from a perspective of being an infinite being who lives many lifetimes and we don't really know. We don't know any of that, right? But it's just ways of opening your mind. I always say that I have a mind that's open to everything and close to nothing. I let my intuition filter what is right for me and what feels good and true. But just a perspective, you know, he's saying if you know that you're going to live multiple lifetimes and 
a little baby comes in and dies young. What was that life teaching you? What was the lesson? Did it teach you to open your heart more? Did it teach you to have compassion more? Did it show you a depth of love that you'd never experienced before? So it broke your heart open. Did it propel you to serve other families and children in the same circumstance? You know, what was the lesson that you received that made you a better, grounded, spiritual, more compassionate person? Just a perspective. Now, let's say that you lost a relationship. You went through a divorce or a bad breakup. You know, the way that I look at this, so I have been in many narcissistic relationships because I'm a light worker. <laughs> light workers attract takers often or someone that needs saving or help. That's just the story. That's part of our soul's path. That's part of the lesson. And it's something that we have to learn. So I have been taken advantage of by many people in my life. And when I'm out of the relationship, regardless of the damage that I feel I might have done, whether it's financial, emotional, whatever the case may be, thank God I'm out of that relationship. You have to shift your perspective. If that person is the one that ended the relationship, you know what? Thank yourself for releasing that person from a situation they didn't want to be in because you're better for it and they're better for it. So it's more about looking at, okay, you know what? There are billions of people on the planet. So if I choose to be in another relationship, I will be aligned with that in the perfect time and space. Thank God that I had the opportunity to love. Thank God that I had the opportunity to learn. Maybe I learned boundaries. Maybe I saw some behavioral characteristics that I've seen in the past and didn't listen. But now that I've went through this again, I'm going to listen now and I'm going to, my intuition will be heightened. I will notice those patterns. So thank God for the teaching moment and the learning and the lesson. So things like that can help you also shift. Let's say it was money you lost. I heard this perspective. I believe it was from Brian Tracy, but I can't remember, but it always stuck with me. So let's just say someone stole money from you or they took advantage of you. You know what? He used the example of wealthy millionaires that we see all over the news who file bankruptcy or they lose all their money and then in a couple of years they have it all back. Why is that? That is because he teaches that your earning potential is your greatest asset. You know inside you that you can get it all back. So whether that's through your skills, your knowledge, your alignment, whatever it is, you know that just take it because I have more coming to me. And when you have that type of attitude, losing money isn't that big of a deal to you. You basically, you loosen your resistance to that and the charge, the emotional charge is let go. So I'm always trying to be super fair with people. So if I'm in some type of contractual deal, I'm not going to be the one digging in and trying to sue them and do all this other stuff. The only way that I will do that if there's a boundary issue that spirit has me addressing. But other than that, I'll be the generous one because I believe that the universe is going to take care of me and that I have the ability to attract more into my life. And when you have that perspective, it doesn't seem as much of a big deal as it does when you feel that you're in loss, lack, and limitation. And the last one that I'm just going to share, and again, there are countless scenarios that we can go over, but I'm just using the big ones that seem to come up over and over. Let's just say someone mistreated you. They did something wrong to you. They harmed you in some way. The way that I look at that is it's unfortunate. First of all, I'm very sorry that happened to you. I'm very sorry. I'm not in any way, shape, or form minimizing it or washing over it. What I am trying to get you to shift to just to help you heal and move forward is that thank goodness it's not occurring right now in this very moment while you're listening to this. That you have the opportunity to grow stronger from the situation through what? Well, I can look at helping others that have been through the same situation. I can take the opportunity to be super grateful that I made it through. I survived that. Look how strong you are. Like, I, I think about things like that. Like, look what you've overcome. The triumph of the human spirit. You overcame it. You went through it. You came out to the other side. And you can help people that are going through that by showing them that there is a light at the end of, end of the tunnel. That's how we inspire people. We lift each other up. And we build a sense of connection and community in the, in those circumstances. So I just feel there's an always a reason, a lesson, a different perspective a spiritual force that we are open to when we're broken open that is able to come through, flow through us, come through us, speak through us, speak to and through us. 
that we should always try to consider because it will help us to come out lighter, better, stronger, wiser, and all of the above. So let's talk about spiritual practices that can also help us to move forward. The first thing that no one wants to talk about, but that everyone should talk about is forgiveness. There are lots of forgiveness processes that can help you to look at the situation and send the situation love and let it go. Cut cords. I have a forgiveness process on my website. It's a combination of all the various techniques that I've used over the years that I find to be super helpful and powerful. I'm also running energy healing on it and it's not very long. I will leave the link in the show notes. You can find lots of forgiveness processes, find whatever works for you. And sometimes it's forgiving yourself for the decisions that you made. You have to let all of that go because it's only keeping you bound. It isn't helping you at all. I used to think years ago that being in unforgiveness towards someone made me grow stronger. But I realized that that person doesn't care if I forgive them or not. So in reality, all it was doing was just jamming up my energetic system. It wasn't doing anything for anybody except for me. And it wasn't positive. So you really have to learn to let things go. Also, loving kindness meditations are phenomenal. They help to soften you. They help to get energy flowing. They lift your spirit. They connect you to source. They're just phenomenal. I have a receiving loving kindness meditation on my YouTube channel, but I would also encourage you to do one to send loving kindness, which I may create and post at a later time. Serving others is a phenomenal way to move you through and focus you on other people that are in need. It helps you to count your blessings and serving other people just helps to lift your vibration overall. So that's a great way. The main thing that I try to tell people to do when they are struggling with the past is focus on your highest priorities here and now. Get busy on creating your future. Let's just say that when you were doing the process earlier where you were learning what need you were trying to get or what your payoff was for staying stuck in the past, Like, let's just say that I am trying to get support and I'm trying to get support in very low vibrational ways by keeping myself stuck and arguing for my limitations. The way that um, I can take that information and shift it is to give support to other people. Because when you give, you're sending the message that you are aligned, first of all, with that vibration. Second, that you have plenty to spare and share. And it has a way of boomeranging back to you. So I would use those things and look at the ways that I can create that for my life, for myself, so that I can get the feelings that I need so I can be the best version of myself to myself and everyone around me, raise the consciousness of the planet, and therefore raise the vibration of the planet through my own individual work. The next thing you have to do is do a gratitude practice, focusing on everything you do have, everything you've been through. You know, I celebrate my journey. I've had some dark moments. I've made mistakes. I've made choices that I wish I didn't make. I've been through a ton, but I look at where I am now. I celebrate myself. I think aging is an opportunity to increase in value and competence. I embrace aging. I know that there's a lot of people that They sit and um, they dwell on aging like, oh, I'm getting old. Those people are such a drag to be around. (laughs) Don't be that person. I look at the fact that my brothers died very young, um, younger than I am now, even though they died 10 years apart, one at 22 and one at 32. And I think, my goodness, I am so blessed to be in my body here and now. I serve a purpose or else I wouldn't be here. And I embrace every year. So gratitude is a big one. Other spiritual tools um, that you can use. Energy healing is phenomenal. That's something that I do. I love it enough to actually do it. And I also receive it. Readings are great. They help you to see where the energy is around you at this time and empower you to make choices going forward. It's just a divine guidance session, divine counseling session, if you are with the right person giving the reading couple of things that I want to share in closing. In the pranic healing community, there is um, Master Stephen Coe. He recently did a New Year's meditation. Actually, it was a full moon meditation, but he's shared this before, but I'm just going to share it with you because it really helps me. If you've ever noticed when you get on the spiritual path, all of a sudden you're feeling good, you're wanting to vibrate higher, and things just seem to happen to you all the time where it's like, wait a minute, (laughs) 
I thought things were going to get better. And all of a sudden, just everything just going haywire in my life. He shares that it's because those of us on the spiritual path are accelerated learners. So when you would normally take maybe, let's just say it would take five years for all of these events to bubble up to the surface to be cleared. When you get on a fast spiritual path and you're dedicated and you're trying really hard and you're doing your practices, all of those things that would take five years, maybe take one year. Everything comes up at once to be cleared because it's raising your vibration. For me, that really made sense because... I've had a very tumultuous path. There's just been continual um, challenges, big challenges. And I I look around and I think, my good Lord, here I am trying to serve and I'm trying to keep myself healthy and I want to be a good person. I want to be generous. I want to be giving. And every time I turn around, the bottom's fallen out. And I realize now it's because of the practices that I'm doing, the more that I go through and the more that I overcome... Number one, I'm able to inspire others by connecting and sharing that experience and also lending light to others. That's also helping me to elevate my path. So that's just something to put in your back pocket to encourage you that this may be happening with you. Also, just think, I'm just going to go back to the things that you're hung up on. Let's just say if you had a million dollars in the bank and someone stole $100 from you, would it bother you that much? Probably not. You'd probably say, you know what? They needed it more than I did. So I'm going to send them on their path of healing. And I'm just going to let that go. When you are abundant, those types of things don't bother you as much. Okay. If you had um, a horrible breakup, but then shortly after you met the most amazing partner of your dreams, that was everything that you could have ever wanted and imagined, 10 times more than the previous partner, would that breakup bother you as much? Probably not because you'd be on your path of bliss and love and joy and you would just let that person go. You wouldn't even have any unforgiveness toward them because better was coming for you. If someone passed away and you knew that you were going to see them in a day, a month, a week, eh, you'd probably be like, okay, let me go ahead and experience this life while I can because I know I'm going to be reunited with that person again. So I miss them, but I know I'm going to see them again. So let me just send them love and connect with them on a spiritual level and let it go. Possessions. Let's say you lost your house. You lost um, things that you wanted, things that were really dear to you. If you knew that you had four times that coming into your life, would those possessions bother you? Or would you just be like, you know what? Take them. I have more coming. Do you see what I'm getting at? When we are stuck, it's because we're, we are experiencing a scarcity and lack consciousness. When you relax into the realization that you are abundant, that there is enough for everyone, that we are part of an infinite supply, you are source incarnated into a physical form. Then we just kind of think, you know what, let that go. Does it really matter? Does it, is it serving me? If I have more coming, do I really need to get so hung up on the details? You don't. So that is my best tips, spiritual and practical things that I've learned that have helped me to help you. So with that said, let's start a meditation. During this meditation, I'm going to run energy healing, but while I'm running the energy healing, I'm just going to share with you what I'm doing. I would like for you to relax and breathe deeply. Let's do some cord cutting and then we're just going to flood your field with beautiful golden energy so that way you can relax into the present moment keep your eyes faced front so that you're not stuck in the past so let's get started and I'd like you to just take a moment to thank yourself thank yourself for getting you to this point doesn't matter how ugly it looks to you it doesn't matter how broken and beaten you feel you made it you are here you have the capability to create the life that you desire it's never too late and it doesn't matter the circumstances Breathing deeply, we're going to cut cords to the past. Pulling it up by the root. Pulling it out and cutting it done. Breathing deeply. The pulse of 
life and spirit is moving to and through you. Grounding you deep into the center of the earth. And from here on out, you are going to get so busy creating your life and bettering yourself from the here and now, focusing on the present and the future, that you won't have any interest in looking back. The past is done and over with. And you're no longer going to allow those seeds to root in your mind. Now is the time to get busy creating your best life, your dream life. And yes, you can have it. No more arguing for limitations. Limitations are mental. When we open ourselves, to the unlimited divine energy of spirit, all possibilities are possible. directly from source. Your intuition is glistening, it's clear. There's a direct pipeline. And when you get your intuitive nudges, follow them. This is a co-creative experience because we all have free will. mention that if you felt a little bit emotional during that healing, that's perfectly okay. That's, that's great, actually, because that means that you've released it and let it go. So you can go back and do that as many times as you feel drawn. Also, I wanted to mention on my YouTube channel, I have a daily purpose and direction meditation and Reiki healing that may help you to center yourself and get, get um, information on what you should do each day if you're struggling. Oh, and I just created two MP3s. One is for evening affirmations with energy healing. One is daily affirmations, morning affirmations with energy healing to help you infuse your day with positive, connective, relaxing, and also restorative thoughts and healings. Um, I have the MP3 downloads on my website, and then I put videos on the YouTube channel for those that prefer that method. And as always, if you have podcast suggestions or things you would like me to share, you can email me at susan at blendedinsight.com. You connect with me on YouTube, Blended Insight, also Facebook, Blended Insight. And you can visit me on my webpage, blendedinsight.com. Thank you so very much for joining me. And I wish you the most fabulous, fabulous day. Sending you lots and lots of love.